Okay, good uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I think we can get started now. Uh, the lobby seems to have calmed down a little bit. So welcome to today's webinar to go over uh, Sophos cybersecurity. We'll start with a couple of introductions. So my name is Anthony Heptonstall. I'm the sales manager here at Geocom. And joining me today is Kyle Torres from Sophos, and he's our MSP slash CSP channel account executive. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Kyle, I'll hand over to you. All right. So. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Anne, for that introduction. So my name is Kyle Torres. I'm the channel account executive for Sophos's MSP and CSP program. So I've been with Sophos uh, just over five years doing anything and everything um, MSP cybersecurity related. Um, so what we just want to talk about today, you know, in this kind of announcement that um, you know, Sophos has integrated into that Geocom cloud market, uh, we want to talk, give everyone a bit of an overview about Sophos, you know, just very briefly the Sophos mission strategy and look at some of those products, talk about what we mean when we're saying cybersecurity as a system. You know, from there, we'll be able to look at the MSP Flex program through Sophos, how that's licensed, um, a little bit more of an overview on the products and some interesting points to help you position those. Some of the free resources that we have for our partners through our Sophos partner program, and then show you what that actually looks like. So we'll start by taking a look at the Geocom cloud market, what that Sophos journey looks like through there, um, and then how to transition that into the management in Sophos Central. And then we'll set some time and uh, we'll have a little bit of dedicated time for some Q&A. Please do put any questions you have into that chat and we'll pause you know, every few minutes and, and take a look at those. And the last thing we'll do to discuss the next steps is we'll tell everyone about our fast track to flex promo um, and the fast start promo. We have to go along with that. So Sophos at a glance, um, we are a global leader in cloud and AI enabled endpoint network, email and cloud security. Um, so the headquarter, the US headquarters is in Santa Clara, California. Um, and then we have our also our flagship building in Abingdon in the UK where we were founded. Just over 4,500 employees, um, over 385,000 active next gen firewalls on, you know, out there. One of the world's largest and fastest growing MDR providers. So we'll talk a little bit around the managed SOC service that we actually have available through the MSP program. On top of that. So the Sophos mission and strategy, just to highlight a couple of these points. Um, <clears throat> the adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem is, is a big one. And we'll talk about cybersecurity as a system. We'll talk about the benefits of having your cybersecurity in this adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem model as opposed to having multiple point security products. Sophos Central, which is our management console, and we'll absolutely take a look at that. The AI and automation that underpins all of the different product developments that we do. Leading cybersecurity research. So not only are we you know, that security vendor, but we also have our own Sophos Labs. Sophos Labs buildings are located. Um, we have buildings located around the world, one of which we do have in Abingdon in the UK, and they are one, we are one of those contributors to the global virus definition database. And that Sophos Labs team contributes somewhere in the range of 400,000 previously unseen malware samples every day to that database. Um, and then channel best and MSP best. So we say channel best and MSP best. We are 100% channel. Um, we're channel first, channel only. All of our business is done through our partners, through the distributors. We don't deal direct to those customers at all. One of the differentiators with Sophos in regards to the, this, this market leadership is that we can say that we're a recognized market leader, not only for endpoint, but endpoint as well as network, managed services, and our channel program overall. So that's, that's a big one for Sophos to be a leader in both endpoint and network security. So to be able to provide the channel endpoint security, network security, end to end, all managed through Sophos Central through that single vendor. Now to, to give you a, an idea of what all of this looks like, put all of this together and we have this adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem. So if we start at the very bottom, we we'll start with the data, the, the data lake. The data lake is the repository that lets you access information on machines. So all the information from the different products that you're using, if you've got your endpoint 
your email, your mobile, you know, everything protected through Sophos, all that it goes into the data lake. And if you're using XDR, for example, and you want to query some devices, that data lake will actually provide um, 30 days of off device reporting. So you'll be able to access that data even if the devices are offline. So then always looking into that data lake and then adding to the next layer up, we have the threat intelligence, um, which we generate from a few different ways. We have artificial intelligence, so the deep learning, Sophos Labs, and then the actual security operations team. All three of these are looking at what each other are doing and finding ways to, to add that threat intelligence into the, into, that, into the security products. The product range we have, so we've got you know, the whole range here kind of laid across from endpoint starting on the left. You've got endpoint security, which will look at some of these, you know, these products as endpoint, the server protection, the mobile, the encryption. But then we also have network security. So Sophos has its own range of hardware. We have our own range of firewalls, switches, access points, and remote ethernet devices. Then if we wanna move into cloud security, we have cloud native security, cloud workload protection, and our virtual firewalls that can be used as bring your own license in Azure and AWS. And then on the email security side, we do have Sophos Central Email and Sophos, Sophos Fish Threat, which is an end user training and awareness tool. And on the very top, we have the managed services. So a couple of different ways to manage that. We have Sophos Central for the partner to manage, but then we also have our own security teams that can go in and help with that security management through the MTR services and our rapid response service. And then in the green, we've got that range of open APIs and then the third party integrations. So just to show a little bit more about that, if you are interested in taking a look um, at the APIs, at the integrations that we already have, the integrations for PSA, RMM, SOAR and SIEM tools, et cetera, that can actually be found if you just, um, probably the easiest way would be to go to your search engine of choice and type in Sophos integrations and then go to that community page. So we do have that community page listed here. Um, and then if you'd like to see a list of all the APIs that we do have available, that's that link on the bottom right, developer.sophos.com and that'll take you to a list of the different APIs that are available. So when we talk about cybersecurity as a system, the idea is that this trusted, the, the times have changed model, the trusted perimeter um, is pretty much eroded. You know, two, two and a half years ago now, well, yeah, almost two and a half years ago now um, is when the majority of us would go into our physical office. We go into our trusted perimeter um, and that trusted perimeter consists of physical access controls like going into your office and there's maybe you know, a card you have to swipe to get in, a pin code you have to use, even if there's a receptionist, you know, security person or receptionist at the desk, you've got that layer of control. You come into your office that most likely has some type of firewall in place to protect the network with all of the devices located in the office also protected. So you're in this trusted perimeter. And what we've seen is that essentially eroding. We've got remote users, you know, with working from home that all kicked off about two and a half years ago. We've got SaaS coming more into play and then the transition over to the public cloud. So security has gone from being mostly contained within this trusted perimeter to migrating into all of these different areas. And the approach that we're currently seeing is uh, the traditional approach, which is to find those point security products. When every one of these new areas pops up, you find one of those point security products to help you cover that. You find a leader in that category. You've got a new point security product vendor to go ahead and address you know, that new environment. But the issues we see with the point security products, they often work, they work in isolation. Um, they don't share information unless you are doing the, you know, the setup, whether it's through API or integration, and hopefully they all integrate with the same place to then see what you can share. They'll require multiple management consoles, and they're all built separately by different vendors. And we say with the adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem, giving you access to this cybersecurity as a system model is that the products work together. They're constantly sharing information. The management is centralized um, and they're compatible by design. You know, all of these different products are designed. Can we play off of, you know, a security feature from the other product to make them communicate with each other, take an action and automate something? And that's what some of these products actually do. 
Um, we'll take a, a little bit of a pause, see if there's any any questions that have come through as of yet. Nope, all good. All right, so go ahead and take a look at the MSP program itself. So what we say, what we what we're talking about when we're saying one security vendor, one management dashboard, and one flexible program. So one security vendor. We talked about those point security products. Um, we talked about you know that they work in isolation. They have multiple management consoles, all of those different ones. And the idea is that if you had say nine different vendors for nine different up to nine different products, you could actually consolidate that. Not only could you consolidate that, but you could layer a managed SOC service on top of that to have 24 seven incident response looking at that entire portfolio. So when we say one vendor, we mean consolidating end to end with with that through that one vendor idea. One dashboard, so just a couple of screenshots here, because ideally we can um, have some time and I can show you what this actually looks like live rather than just you know go through these. Um, but when we talk about that dashboard, we're talking about Sophos Central. In Sophos Central, we have our partner dashboard where you, the partner, can go in. You can manage all of your monthly clients. You can deploy licenses. You can check your monthly usage, access whatever you need to for those customers. And then within the partner dashboard, every one of your customers has its own unique central admin. So this is that central admin that's unique to the customer. And again, we'll, we'll be able to take a look at this part as well. So just to go over the, the the products that we have available here on the MSP program, if any of you um, joining us today might have looked at the the Sophos MSP Flex program, maybe you know four four or five years ago, you would have seen that we didn't quite have everything, not quite all the core products that were on the um, the reseller the term side. Whereas today we we line we align very nicely with those. So we have on that monthly billing program, um, we have those firewall subscriptions. But we have server protection, we have cloud optics, we have device reporting, we have endpoint security. So that's every level of endpoint security. Um, we will break those down a little bit more, but that does include Central Intercept X Essentials, um, which is that entry level all the way up through MTR. Mobile products, not just advanced, but we also have Intercept X standalone, standard, and advanced device encryption, email, and fish threat. So the way that we license these, um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you the categories first. So we put all of these into different categories. You can see that firewalls are per device. You can see servers are per server. Cloud is per cloud asset. Device reporting is its own category there. And all of the products on the right are in the user category. So the reason we put those in a user category is that these are user based licenses for these products. The endpoint security. Um, is not device based, it's user based, meaning that one user can have multiple devices. So if you have, if your customer has some end users that have a desktop in the office and a laptop that they travel with, you can have this, both of those devices protected under the same single user license. Email is slightly different, that is per mailbox and per shared mailbox per month, um, <clears throat> uh, but there's no, does not count distribution lists or aliases. So now that we have all of these products in these categories, this is where the, the pricing comes into play. So the Sophos MSP program is based is designed around volume based discounts with aggregate license calculation. So volume based discounts means the more licenses you have, the cheaper it gets. So the more licenses that you've got, the cheaper your buy price is. Now there is no MSRP. It is purely a partner buy price. So we can see here the different groups and where those discounts come into place. So the most, if we look at the user license up in the top left, uh, this blue one, the most expensive price range for all of these products um, is that one to 99 user level. Once you hit a total of 100 users or more, you move into that next price band. So that price band um, affects all of the customers that are that are on there. And that's where I get into this, this aggregate license calculation. So when I say aggregate ca license calculation, we take that count across your entire customer estate. So all of your customers contribute to that count and all of your customers, regardless of size, get whatever that total count is. So 
go ahead and have a look here so we can see if we have a partner, so one of our MSP partners um, has 1100 user licenses and 33 servers. We'll just take those top two and look at those. 1100 user licenses means that they would be in that 1000 to 4999 price band. Now those 1100 user licenses, that can be, um, that can be one massive enterprise client with 1100 users. Um, that could be two, 500 user companies to equal a thousand. It can be spread across any amount of customers of any size because it's all aggregated. So also those products aggregates, those 1100 user licenses can be half of those can be endpoint. If you have 550 users with endpoint protection and you were to cross sell device encryption to go with every one of those users, your count has now doubled because you're using two different licenses in the user category and you've managed to hit a new price band. Um, so the idea is that commercially, this program would incentivize, you know, this this spread portfolio, this idea that we can cross sell and upsell all within the Sophos portfolio, and that actually makes it easier to hit these volumes. So volume based discounts with aggregate license calculation. So the journey to MSP Connect Flex, what does a partner, what kind of hoops does a partner have to jump through uh, to be a partner? Not, not too many actually. Um, the first thing we look for is that, um, you know, if, if you have, if you match a managed services business model or you're looking to transition to one, um, then this program is designed for you. Um, this program is not so much designed for, you know, resellers that are just looking for a way to get their bills monthly. And the idea is that, um, you know, you've got this sort of establishment in managed services, um, but that's not to say if you're looking at putting some services together and going into that territory, we're happy to help you with that part of the journey as well. So this managed services business model, um, you'll need to fill out an MSP Connect application. So this is the application to the MSP terms and conditions, um, and that is on sophos.com slash MSP is where you can find that. Once you're in, once you've signed up, you'll get your activation email that will give you access into the partner portal where we have one exam that we need you to complete, which is the MSP 01 MSP Connect Flex exam. Uh, we do also have an SC 01 sales fundamentals. I highly recommend that one to go with it, um, but we just need you to complete that MSP 01 exam. Um, and then the last step is once we've got that notification, um, once you've notified us that your exams are all complete, we can go ahead. You can either notify Geocom and Geocom will let us know, or you can get in touch direct with your Sophos account manager or the MSP team. We'll confirm it with Geocom and we'll get you all set up for that, that monthly billing. So who does what in this relationship? Um, just to give everyone an overview. So Sophos, we have the legal relationship with the MSPs. It is our legal MSP terms and conditions. We provide the product. We um, we provide the services if you're taking any of those services. Um, we're also responsible for MSP training and certification. Um, so we hold the fast track to flex certification workshops, which I'll tell everyone a little bit more about. Um, but we also come up with, you know, with the training, with the certifications, what's recommended, et cetera. And um, so far, so we keep the technology running. So we keep the synchronized security in place, that, that communication between products. Um, and then we provide everything from level two and above support to the MSP, to the partner. Now we have the distributor. We have Geocom in here. So Geocom is here to help handle the hardware logistics. So you can, we do have access to that range of firewalls to switches to the hardware. Um, so Geocom can help to handle those hardware logistics, um, provide you any terms that you might need, whether they're copies of Sophos terms um, and then their own terms. Take care of that invoicing and then takes care of the payment with Sophos. And then the partner, we look to them to provide some type of initial um, level one support to that customer, the provisioning and configuration of the licenses to invoice all of your customers and then to procure through our distribution model. All right, so I'll take a, um, a quick, quick pause here to see if any questions have come through and if we had any, um, any questions come through. Nothing so far. I think you must be explaining everything perfectly, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If um if I am going too fast, anyone please feel free to pop something in the chat to uh, to stop me or you know or call out or anything. But no, we'll go ahead. Um, we'll crack on then. <clears throat> 
So we'll take a little bit of a look uh, at these products now. So when I say portfolio overview, what I've done, this isn't a you know a full product overview. Uh, I've just gone and I've picked out some of the, the interesting facts from the endpoint, some of the things from the uh, user range of products and the server products, things that I think help them stand out. So just to break down those different levels of endpoint security. Um, so right at your entry level, we do have that central intercept X essentials, basic, effective, inexpensive, check the box. So this is that tick the box solution. Um, it is an AV and anti ransomware solution with the crypto guard rollback feature built in there. It does not have um, any control policies like peripheral control, web control, app control, DLP. Um, it doesn't have the custom policies or the threat cases. IntercepteX is the standalone anti ransomware. So that's no AV. It is just an anti ransomware that can actually be layered atop um, a, a dedicated AV because there's no signatures to conflict with any signature scanning policies. And then we have IntercepteX Advanced. So Central IntercepteX Advanced. Um, if we abbreviate it, we call it SIXA for short. And um, this is what I'd probably recommend as that that entry level and the minimum to really get the next gen protection. So when we say next gen protection, intercept X advanced. We break that out into the signature based AV with behavioral scanning with anti ransomware to have crypto guard and wipe, wipe guard to protect against file and disk based ransomware, as well as control policies. So that's application control, web control, peripheral control, data loss prevention, and custom policies built into that one product. Um, from there, we can go upwards into the more security specialist type products. We have things like XDR. So this is an EDR product. I know the market term for EDR, endpoint detection and response. We actually, um, up until last year, we did call it SIXA with EDR. And then when we introduced the data lake capability, that data lake feature, and um, we changed our name for it into XDR, extended detection and response. Um, and then from up there, we can then layer that on top with MTR, standard and advanced. And this is the managed threat response. This is our 24 7 managed SOC service. Um, they both are 24 7. They both include remediation. The big differentiator with advanced um, is where you get the lead less threat hunting kind of thing. But we can we can definitely talk a little bit more around MTR. So with that IntercepteX advanced level, I mentioned that it has something called the threat cases. You don't have the threat cases in essentials, but it is in advanced and above. So the threat cases are essentially a visual representation of the who, what, when, where, why, and how of an attack. So if we think about that we've been attacked and we've been notified that our AV has picked something up and we look at the summary for that, we can see what the root, what the device was, the root cause of it, the beacon event, which is where Sophos picked it up, when it was detected, and the fact that it was ultimately cleaned. So that's great. So we've got our summary there. We can see that our AV was doing our job. Um, <clears throat> this is very much a, a reactive, reactive response to it. Um, but how can we turn that reactive response potentially um, into some proactive activities with the end user when one of these things happens, even when they're actually protected um, and they didn't actually lose any data or anything, is we can take a look at the threat case. So this, this link analysis diagram, this visual representation, it shows us everything. Um, that root cause event on the left-hand side, Microsoft Office, it shows every single file that was written, every URL that was accessed, registry keys that were accessed, anything that happened um, that spawned off of that Microsoft Office. We can see that that was parent to PowerShell. PowerShell you know, in and of itself is not a malicious program. Um, it doesn't sound right to say about PowerShell working in security, but it's not designed to be malicious on its own. Um, but what it does is it does deploy some nasty things. So PowerShell on its own, nothing up with that, but we still flag everything PowerShell did because it was involved in the event. Um, and then finally, PowerShell ran this confirmation executable, which was our beacon event that we flagged as malicious. We then stopped it and cleaned it. So we can go right there and we can see all of those details for everything that happened. Now, how can we translate this to a client? Uh, well, right off the bat, it's useful. If we have end users that are in you know, sectors like financial services, um, if they're in financial services, if they're a type of 
a end user type of organization where they need to audit. It helps them if they can audit everything, even if they've been protected and an attack was stopped, being able to have this audit trail as proof in history would be useful. So you've got that available to you there. And then Microsoft Office isn't always the root cause. Oftentimes in these threat cases, and if we've got some time, I can show you a, a live threat case we have in the dashboard that I've got ready. Um, but we can see in that threat case, um, Outlook was actually the root cause. We can see that Outlook was spawned to Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word created the nasty thing that was our beacon event. And from there, we can say, all right, if this customer has X amount of detections coming through and they're all caused from Outlook and we can see that and prove that maybe it's a chance for us to upsell some type of user education product with them, some type of email protection service if we don't have one of those in place. So it's also there for that that sort of sales opportunity. And just to note, you can, um, when we look at this live, um, hopefully I said we'll have some time to look at this live, but if you click on, say, on the left-hand side where it says 88 registry key accesses, if you were to click on that, it will open up a pop-up window um, that you can scroll down and actually see every single registry key that was. Same with any of these, the IP connections, the file reads, all of those. So upgrading from the Intercept X Advanced, if we wanted to put those more advanced security controls on like XDR, MTR, and then as our last resort, we have rapid response. So XDR, extended detection and response, that is the do it yourself. That is a product. Um, that is the toolkit you need to perform your own guided security investigations, run scheduled queries on devices for things. You know, if you just wanted to say run a scheduled query to make sure that certain applications aren't installed or run a scheduled query to make sure that certain applications have the right version or you know, are up to date. You can run these queries just to get that view for general account hygiene, but it also lets you XDR lets you dig into these threat cases and perform some of your own threat hunts and investigations. MTR is the service. So if XDR is the do it yourself, the toolbox, the MTR is the contractors. That's the service. That's the people that know how to use those tools and you tell them what to build, where to go and so on. So the MTR team is that 24 seven managed SOC service. It includes, um, it does include remediation as well in both the standard and advanced levels. So you'll actually get, if you have advanced, you'll get a direct line to a SOC team leader. You'll have regular um, security posture reviews. There's quite a bit there on that advanced. On the standard, you still have a 24 seven managed SOC team working with you. And we have a couple of different ways that you can work with them as well. And then finally, we have rapid response. So this is our um, post breach remediation service. So this is part if you are looking at developing an incident response plan, rapid response can absolutely fill the gap of, you know, who are you using for your incident response service? What is the process for your incident response? Have a look at Sophos rapid response, what our process is, how we work and use our emergency line as you know your contact number. Um, but we can absolutely help you with that incident response through rapid response. And that does apply even if the customer um, either doesn't have Sophos or has Sophos, but it's not installed. It wasn't um, it was not installed on all the devices and something got hit. Taking a closer look at the MTR piece, and um, so it is a 24 seven human led threat hunting team. They investigate suspicious activity, not just detections. So that's something interesting. If we have a look back at this threat case, we can see those little hazard warnings um, kind of on the right hand towards the right hand side um, with the confirmation. We see those two orange hazard warnings. So if you have XDR, you'd actually be able um, to go ahead and click on those. If you wanted to yourself, you could send samples of those to Sophos Labs. You could do a cross estate search to see if um, any elements of these files um, live on any other devices in the estate. There's quite a bit you can do there through XDR um, as these are flagged as suspicious. So the MTR team will also look at the suspicious activity. You know, this is a you know, actual team of veteran threat hunters. They're not just there to run your scans when you get a detection. They are there to do 24 seven threat hunting and response. Other stop at notification, we take action. Like I said, we do include the remediation, the actual fixing of what we catch if you'd like us to. And that is included at both standard and advanced, and it doesn't cost anything extra for that. 
what you can see. So we have a couple of different ways um, for you to manage the MTR on your side. When you take the MTR, when you work with the MTR team um, as an MSP, you know, one of the interesting things is that we actually work through you by default. You are our SOC's main point of contact for any customers you have. Now, this can be customized. You can t absolutely, you can tell our SOC, you know, for this customer, I want you to call me first, but for this other customer, I want you to remediate anything as soon as it happens. You know, we have the ways for you to customize working with our SOC that way. Um, but just from a management reports wise, on the left hand side, um, this is your. MSP's report. So this is your partner report to give you a summary view of all the customers you have on MSP. Give you a summary of how many cases you've had per customer, total detections, and let you drill it down a bit from there. And then you have on a customer level, you can take, pull both a monthly and weekly report for each customer that you have on MTR. So you can get that monthly and that weekly report. Moving on to the server, um, a little interesting point about the server is that our server license, so that same Intercept X Advanced for server, XDR for server, MTR for server, they are all hybrid cloud ready. So regardless of where your server is, if you have customers um, and you're helping them migrate into the cloud, if you have assets in AWS, in Azure, in Google Public Cloud, or if you're doing it a more traditional way, our server license, that same server license, can actually be used as bring your own license in the public cloud. So the same place, the same order, the same procurement method, the same deployment method, um, but then when you actually look at it in Sophos Central, it'll just give you a breakdown of which servers are where, whether they're in AWS, Azure, Google Public Cloud. Central device encryption. Um, this is essentially management of BitLocker and file vault disk encryption, uh, which also has some secure document sharing and software based encryption loaded in there as well. Um, so central device encryption, it actually shares the same agent with Sophos endpoint. So if you're looking at doubling your usage count to get to a cheaper price, looking at trying to see where you can, if you're say you're at 495 users for the month, you want to try to get five more on there to hit 500 easy enough to look see see where you have an op opportunity to put some device encryption in um, it shares the same agent it's just management of bitlocker and file vault does things like help your customer you can trigger um, bitlocker password resets set the requirements see which computers are encrypted run reports on that and set your encryption policies central mobile advanced so like i mentioned we've actually got um, intercept x standalone for mobile and that is just managed security. We have central mobile standard, which is just MDM and bring your own device management. Then we have mobile advanced. So mobile advanced um, combines all of those. So we have the security, all of the security features of the Intercept X standalone. We have the ability to containerize and secure work data on a private device. So even if your employees, if your end user has staff that are using their own devices, but they're still looking at work emails, you can at least use bring your own device management to secure that corporate data. <clears throat> Things like compliance monitoring from what you'd expect from the MDM style of solution, reporting, managing the apps remotely, accessing those devices, wiping them if you need to, a host of different actions that you can take. If we want to look at just, um, we'll take a look at some more of these sort of combinations, but whilst we were just talking about the endpoint, the mobile and the device encryption, um, it brings us sort of to this idea of unified endpoint management. So we can help reach that, that unified endpoint management because the idea is that an endpoint is an endpoint. Any point at which data can end up should be classified and treated as a corporate endpoint. So even if customers, if your end users have, cust have um, staff or employees that are looking at corporate data on their phone, even if it's a personal device, but they're still, you know, have their email on their phone. If they lose their phone or their phone is compromised, that is corporate data that is compromised. And in which case, at a minimum, you can offer bring your own device management. The phone is still theirs. Their private data is still theirs. It's still private, but at least the corporate side of things is now managed and protected. You know, so we want to look at how can we provide, you know, the security, through endpoint and through mobile, the management through endpoint and through mobile. And then if you've got a laptop as a last line of defense, if someone you know, gets their laptop stolen or loses it, you can put device encryption on those devices.
Sophos Central Email Advanced, so it's just the advanced level. I uh, don't think there's actually a standard one for that. But the Sophos Central Email Advanced is our email security product. Just to break it down so you can see what it actually consists of. Um, things like inbound protection. So what you would typically want, um, want from an email solution, reputation checks, sender authentications, looking for any anomalies in the header um, with anti-spam and AV engines put in there. Some continuity features um, so we can automate those alerts. We can have the queues for the emails and we have that emergency inbox that you can give your users self-service access to. Um, and then contact control and data loss prevention and push based encryption. And then on the eighth and the advanced threat side, time of click URL protection. So if there is a say there's a dodge, if there's a link in the email, it could be a dodgy link in the email. If you have your time of click URL protection turned on, when the user clicks on that link and it opens up the browser window, it will actually redirect them to a Sophos safe splash page for a few seconds while Sophos inspects that link, make sure there's nothing, you know, nothing malicious on that website and then redirects the user. Um, email includes Sophos Sandstorm, so it does have um, sandboxing for attachments, and it has synchronized security elements worked in there. Now we mentioned the um, the phishing simulation, so that's the Sophos Fish Threat. This is our end user training and awareness. A few points around Fish Threat: um, you only pay for it when you actually use it, so it, it's only licensed on the amount of users that receive a campaign within a single month. Uh, one user receives two campaigns. As long as it's within the same billing period, it's only one license. Um, you can run as many campaigns as you need to. There's no order process or provisioning process. You create the campaigns, you send them out. Um, when the user receives them, it counts as a usage and it shows up for that month's bill. A range of templates and courses to go on with some reports that you can take a look at. So here's what the, some of those templates look like. Um, so we have multiple language support. Um, if you have end users that do business you know, with other countries, then that's pretty useful having those other countries um, scenarios built in because maybe it's a country they do business with. You want to send a fake phishing email camouflaged as if it came from a country that they do business with to try to catch them. You've got that there. Um, Library of International Templates. And then the reporting. This is just an idea um, of what that reporting looks like so we can see things for that customer. See who's opening the emails, who's getting caught, who's reporting it. Um, if they you know, if you if you're using that add on, who's completing the training and look at those different statistics. Um, and fish threat is if you're not currently offering. You know, any type of end user training, education, product or service, you know, what I'd suggest is, you know, if you're if you're a Sophos partner, if you're not a Sophos partner, sign up so you can become a partner. Um, use our, utilize our NFR program where we do have those free licenses um, and try Fish Threat out internally. It's, it's very easy um, to build out a service around Fish Threat where you can go to an end user and, and present to them, you know, a proposal for a contract to say for 12 months, um, I will run a phishing campaign quarterly on all of your staff. I will report to you, I'll give you a report every quarter to show you how your staff's, you know, phishing awareness security posture is improving. And then at the end of the year, we'll look at a summary for that yearly campaign. And we'll decide if you want to keep those campaigns going or move to just some some regular ongoing education because you can send out training only campaigns as well through this. If we want to look at some of those combinations. Um, sales plays, I would say. You can start with the next gen endpoint and server easy with intercept X advanced. So any customer, you know, if, if customers are saying, do you have that next gen solution? Um, it is it's considered next gen. There's no hard definition. Gartner has a loose definition on what they'd consider next gen, um, but central intercept X advanced does fit that category. And then you can look at up to, up layering that up selling that with XDR and MTR can leverage the synchronized security. So this is where those products communicate together. Now we don't have a lot of time today to dig into synchronized security, but um, if that's something that interests you, if what's today interests you, um, we do have these fast track to flex events coming up where we will dig into that much more. Um, and then the ability to upsell you know, additional services. So device encryption, which is becoming more relevant with today's remote working environment. Sophos mobile, which we can secure corporate or personal mobile devices phishing simulation, Sophos email, and then cloud security.
We want to bundle a couple of these products together for different scenarios. Again, phishing protection, three products ready to go, three user based products, user banded products, um, Sophos email advanced, phish threat, and Sixa with XDR. Email advanced as your first line of defense there at the mailbox, phish threat for your, for your users, and XDR um, for those endpoints. And similarly, if we wanted to go a more data protection angle, we want to focus on the data. You know, we're going to look at Sixa with XDR. Yes, because of the malware, the ransomware, the exploit prevention, the automatic cleanup, um, but also for the fact that <clears throat> we have the data loss prevention policies in Intercept X Advanced and Up. Sophos Mobile Advanced, because an endpoint is an endpoint, so we need to make sure that anywhere we've got data has some type of protection on it. Um, and then device encryption for that bit locker, that file vault, that last line there. So just um, a few resources for you. So what we're going to do is we're just we're going to wrap up with these slides here very soon um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll show you what that Geocom marketplace looks like. We'll show you what that partner dashboard looks like. Uh, but what I just wanted to show you is in the partner portal, we have some MSP specific resources, quite a few resources um, available. We have the MSP hub. We have a host of free marketing resources, so these are pre made uh, lead generation campaigns, demand generation campaigns, displacement campaigns. Um, we have lead referral programs so you can embed elements of our website into yours. And if a customer downloads any of that information, you get a lead from that. So a lot of useful marketing information there. MSP specific assets. So we have things like our um, battle cards with other MSP vendors, program guides, um, even some end user, some PowerPoints that you can co-brand or white label and present to your end users, pre-made, ready to go. A few technical um, and support desks that you can access through the partner portal. We have a wireless desk. If you give us all of the building and building material information, the layout of a plan, if you're looking at putting in access points and Wi-Fi, our and our team can provide you with a free predictive site survey. We can give you a branded Sophos wireless report. We can give you a channel map, a signal to noise weight ratio, and advise on the best placement um, and recommendation for those access points. RFP desks to help with tenders, sizing desks if you're looking at sizing up any firewalls, whether they are physical, virtual, or going to be in the cloud, migration desks, and our MTR desk. Um, if there's no questions there, um, if we don't have any questions there, then what I will do is I will pass things over to Anth. So we've talked about um, essentially all these things that Sophos has. Great. What does it look like? So what I'm going to do is I'll pass it over to Anth, and what he's going to do is show us um, what it looks like, what Sophos looks like on the Geocom cloud market, where you can find it, um, and essentially how you can create a customer and, and get going on the cloud marketplace. Perfect. Thanks, Kyle. We do have a couple of questions that have come through on the chat. Do, do okay. you want to maybe go through those now? Or? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's yeah. do it. Okay, perfect. So first question we've got is from James Martin. So uh, James is currently using a vast uh, business cloud care um, and wants to know what the lowest endpoint security skew is available. Um, so just the endpoint, uh, sorry, just the antivirus um, for, for a Windows device. Yeah, so that would be um, that would be the intercept X essentials. Um, that is that is our sort of that entry level. Um, I'd say that tick the box one. It is signature based AV. It is behavioral scanning um, and it has the anti ransomware built in as well. So it's AV and anti ransomware, but without any of those next gen controls that advanced has like the peripheral control, web control, app control, DLP. So central intercept X essentials is that entry level for AV on devices. OK, perfect. James, I know you've asked for some pricing on there as well, so I'll, I'll reach out to you after this webinar uh, to, to kind of give pricing. There is pricing available on the Geocom Cloud Market for uh, the Sophos MSP SKUs as well, uh, so you will be able to find it there, but I'll, I'll reach out to you afterwards uh, to kind of discuss that. Uh, the second question we've got is from Richard. So um, the email security, is that only MX record based or are you looking at API options to hook into 365? Um, so it is MX record based um, on the API options for 365. I would definitely say um, we can get in touch and we can chat around that, around what we have available API wise and, and office connectors with that, that central email. 
Um, but if we can actually, yeah, if we can see who's asked these questions, then that's one I'd be I'd be happy to get back to offline. Okay, perfect. And then the last question we've got is from Billy. So uh, Billy actually uh, purchases the Sophos termed via licenses through Arrow, uh, but would prefer to put the MSP uh, licensing through Geocom. Um, I believe this is possible um, to kind of split that out. You okay just to maybe confirm that, Kyle? Yes, yeah, so yeah. that that is. Um, so what we have, just to give everyone a, a little bit um, of the, the site into the inner working, so we have two different um, distributor fields with, with your Sophos partnership. We have a traditional distributor field and an MSP distributor field. So the traditional distributor handles all of your hardware and termed licenses, any upfront purchase you need to make. Um, separately, we have an MSP distributor. Now this handles all of your monthly licenses through the MSP program. So if you would like to have Arrow there on the side as your traditional distribution for any term, but you would like to use Geocom's cloud marketplace because you're set up there, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you just said we can let, um, you know, Anth, you can get with me afterwards, but we can make sure that that partner's aligned correctly in our system, but that's fine. Okay, perfect. Uh, and that wraps up all of the questions we've got so far. So, um, all right. If we just move on to the cloud market experience. So, um, this would be the first page that you come to on, onto the cloud market. So, this is our home page. Uh, so, from here, you can just navigate onto the order page, uh, which is on the next slide, please. Uh, and on the order page here, you will see Sophos MSP. It's a very straightforward process. Um, so then if we click add now, you can either create a customer from that button, um, as I've done here, Sophos MSP is the best because it is, um, but you can also add that to an existing customer as well. And then if we click on to continue to add product, it will take us onto this page here. So as you will see on this page, there isn't actually any pricing on here. Uh, the reason for that is, we just use Cloud Market to activate Sophos MSP. Uh, we don't actually place orders for particular licenses here. Uh, that's all done on the Sophos Central portal, which we'll look through later. Uh, so if we click add and add that to the basket and activate the service, this is the last page that you will see. Um, so if this is the first Sophos order you're placing on Cloud Market, um, you'll see the first box there, which is your Sophos partner ID. Once you've linked that into Geocon Cloud Market, any future activations you won't need to fill that in again. Um, but then there's just some customer details that you need to fill out there. Um, all of the basic things, um, name, address, email address and contact details. Uh, and then when you click continue on from here, that will activate the service. Uh, and then you will jump into the Sophos Central dashboard and that's where you will activate the licenses and that will pull back into Cloud Market for billing purposes. So it's very, very simple process. Um, but uh, any questions on that, please feel free to pop them in the chat uh, or reach out to me after the webinar. Uh, but I'll pass back over to Kyle now to go through the central partner dashboard. Great, thank you. I'm just going to go ahead and go into the dashboard that I've got ready to go here for everyone. All right, so is that showing up all right? Can you see into that dashboard there? It is indeed, yeah. Great stuff. Um, yeah, so like Anth said, the only thing you need to do is you go into that cloud marketplace and you create your customer. As soon as that customer is created um, through the cloud market, then it will show up in your managed customer usage and the deployment, um, the license provisioning, the configuration that is all done self-serve. Um, so there is no, what that means is the traditional order process of um, you, give, you give us the details so that we can create a quote, Sometimes you can do that on your own with the partner portal. Sometimes it might record, uh, require a deal registration. Um, and then what happens is you'll get a quote, you price that out, you give Sophos, the distributor, a purchase order, that gets processed, you get the license schedule. Um, with this, with the MSP program, as soon as that customer is created, um, all you are ready to go to start deploying your licenses there. Um, there is no limit, there is no expiry. They will run as long as they are being used. This is usage based and you can check that usage here in the dashboard. They will run as long as they're being used and they will be invoiced on or around the 22nd of every month. Um, and I say on or around because we don't invoice on the weekends. Um, so we'll go ahead and just have a look in this partner dashboard for you for a couple minutes here. So we have a list of all of our alerts so we can see all of the alerts for our customers. We can highlight one. 
and use single sign in straight into their central admin. We can have, we have an audit log so we can see you know, who in our organization accessed our customers. We can see um, which admin logged in, the IP address, the date, the time, what customers they accessed you know, and in what capacity. Um, on the deployment side, we do have um, a thin installer available. So if we go into deployment, if you go into Windows, um, then right here, and um, we do have the Windows executable installer, a CSV file that has information um, <clears throat> like customer tokens and the management servers, which is useful if you're going to do any of those RMM integrations, um, and then instructions to a KB article. And just while we're on the topic of deployment, now when I mentioned to everyone, you can go into your search engine of choice, you can type in Sophos integrations, And we can see there's a community page right here, community.sophos.com integrations. We'll open that, but we'll also open the top result. So you've got those Sophos central integrations where we have a list there. And then if you do decide you want to click on, say, the ConnectWise Automate with the Dato RMM, um, what this actually does is this links you to that same community page that we talked about. Um, so you're going to get there. <laughs> You'll get here no matter what. Um, but you can see, <clears throat> for example, with ConnectWise Automate, um, we used to, it used to just be a script integration, um, but now we've got that actual um, the ConnectWise Automate plugin. Dato RMM. You can see we're on their comm store and we um, integrate with them for deployments. Got Enable and Central, Ninja RMM, Kaseya VSA, Splunk Apps for Sophos, Synchro, a few different ones there. Um, and that other one, the other link for the APIs, developer.sophos.com. In developer.sophos.com, we have our APIs, and we'll just click APIs right at the top here. And there we go. There's a list ready to go of the different APIs we have. Uh, we do have documentation on all of those, so we have documentation on how to implement them. And if you are interested in those APIs, always check out, definitely check out the What's New page as well. We'll give you whatever our newest APIs are when they've come out. Just a quick look here in the settings. And um, so I also mentioned with the MTR, for example, when I mentioned with MTR how you are that first point of contact, you can choose the different ways uh, you'd like to work with the team. You can customize that. That is all done here from the partner dashboard. So we can go into settings, manage threat response preferences. We have our contacts. So these are our contacts within our organization for the MTR team uh, to communicate with if anything happens. These are our three threat response modes. We have notify, which means our team will just tell you if something's happening. To collaborate. Uh, which is the most popular one I think with with service providers, because this is where our team will actually schedule time to talk with your team and say this is what happened with the customer, and you can tell our team, you can say that's great, thank you, Sophos. We're going to go ahead and take this information to the customer. You go ahead and fix it while we're doing that, and and we'll say fine. So you've got the collaborate option, um, and then the authorize, which is where we will just automatically go. Um, and resolve any active threats and remediate. You'll still get um, the contacts will still all be notified. You'll still get your case reports and case summaries, but they will the MTR team will move straight through into remediation and do that. And if you have any customers that you'd like to set um, on different settings, every customer you have licensed with MTR on MSP will show up here in this list. And from there we can go and we can decide if we want to have customer specific contact preferences or if we want to use them from the partner one. And then if we do want to use them from the customer level, even here in a customer's dashboard, we have our own MTR settings where we can then go and put our own contacts and threat response. But what we can see here in a monthly account, we have all of the products ready to go. If we go into endpoint protection, we can go into the policies. Um, if we go into protect devices, for example, we can see where all those installers are for mobiles, for servers, cloud assets, endpoint protection, virtual environments, 
We have those there. And we even have this one here, this threat analysis center. If you're using intercept X advanced or above, then you'll actually be able to come in here and right here. So we have July 22nd, a crypto guard threat case. We can actually look at that. And here's just like I was mentioning earlier, uh, we have a crypto guard threat case right here. Outlook was the root cause. Outlook was the root cause. PowerShell was the beacon event here. And we can see everything that happened. Registry keys accessed. If we click on that. There's our drop down with everything there. Any URLs that it tried to access. We can see here full list of process. We can export this to CSV. We can summarize this, make it a bit cleaner as well. You know, we can just show a direct path. Just show us the processes. Just show us all of those processes for a simple view right there. So that's the threat cases. That's intercept X advanced and above. And then how much you decide you want to do with those threat cases. If, for example, you wanted to click on request latest intelligence. We request the latest intelligence that sends a sample of whatever you're clicked on to Sophos Labs to then give you back um, a reputation score about that. Um, but yeah, so that's it's just a, a couple of interesting things I wanted to show around the dashboard. Um, again, if you're interested in the fast track to flex events, which is what we'll be doing uh, coming up here, I'll give you a bit more information on those now. Um, or if you'd like a more in-depth overview of the dashboard, then please do get in touch. Um, but let me just go ahead and bring those slides back for everyone so we can finish it up. Um, on that note, um, a good time to stop to see if we had any further questions come through. We have. We've had a couple of questions come through. Okay. Now, so um, I'll start with one that, that I can answer. Um, so, Mark, you've asked uh, on JCOM setup of uh, Sophos. Um, you, you're absolutely correct there. So, you can activate the product, you can um, access the um, dashboard that we've just been through there, and you won't get any charges until the Sophos product is actually consumed. Um, so, by all means, you can get yourself set up and ready now. Um, and until you actually create customers and deploy licenses, you're not going to get uh, any fees from us. Uh, and we do have a couple more questions that are probably best suited for you, Kyle. So, okay. um, one of them is around the integration from Peter. So, uh, do you know if there's any plans to integrate with Synchro RMM? Um, yeah, so we do actually have a little bit there for Synchro. Bear with me. I'll go. Let me go back to that page um, here. I'll show you what we do have there, and we can absolutely have a chat to see if we've got anything um, coming up in the roadmap there. But we have in the um, third-party integrations page. So we do have oops, we do have Synchro MSP here. So it's just for deployment right now. So it's a Sophos Central script. Um, to script your deployment through Synchro MSP. That's just there on that community page. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, another question we've had from Jonathan. Um, so do Sophos have any products that protect uh, VoIP attacks like Vision, Freaking, Eavesdropping, and VoIP spam? Um, that is actually a very good question. Um, VoIP attacks like freaking. I haven't heard that phrase. I haven't heard that phrase freaking in a long time of <laughs> studying cybersecurity. Um, no, that's definitely one. If um, yeah, as long as we've got the details of who asked that question, let me dig some stuff up on that and I'll just send some resources over. Um, not a, a very good question to I'll follow up on that one offline. OK, perfect. Um, and a question again from Richard. Uh, so you mentioned some NFR licenses earlier. Um, so are these available across the full suite or only certain product offerings? I believe I've seen something about this, Kyle, where you get a set amount of licenses and set discounts depending on uh, which suite it is. Uh, you okay to confirm? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, the NFR program is based off of your partner level with Sophos. Even at the authorized level, which is that entry starting level, um, you'll essentially get um, you'll get 10 free endpoint licenses. Uh, what is that? That's 10 free endpoint, 10 email, 10 fish threat, 10 device encryption, 10 mobile, uh, one server. And then I believe it's 50% off of hardware with the free monthly subscription to go on top of that. And then that count goes up a bit. Um, and it's also a, I believe it is a 75% discount on XDR. 
So everything I mentioned prior was zero cost, and then we also have 75% discount on XDR for internal use and a 45% discount on MTR for internal use. Um, but yeah, that's through the, the partner program, the NFR licenses, but a good chunk of free licenses, even just as a, a newly signed up partner. Perfect. Uh, and then the final question we've got is is around firewalls. Uh, so Peter's looking for a, a new firewall uh, vendor, uh, but noticed poor, poor availability in lower end devices from most vendors. Uh, probably one that we'll need to get back to on Peter. Uh, so Peter's asking what the availability yeah. for XGS 87, XGS 107 is. Um, but Peter, I've got your details. I'll, I'll reach out to you afterwards and let you know what the yeah. situation is. Yeah, there. I will say we're, um, we're, we're able to be fairly transparent. All of us at Sophos, you know, we've got lead times. Um, into our stock, you know, and our stock ships from Abingdon um, in the UK. So if any any partners, we can we can chase that up and we can let you know what we've got available, what those lead times look like. Um, we haven't been hit with as as tough stocking issues with everything with the supply chain issues that have been going on. Um, we've been doing doing pretty well, but yeah, we can we can take a look into that. Perfect. And one more question has just come through. So uh, James, again, maybe one that we can um, discuss offline, but is there any movement on skew pricing? For example, uh, price matching existing suppliers. Um, probably one that we can pick up off, offline, James. Is, is there anything that's available as standard, Kyle, or is it something that we do maybe on, on a bit more of an ad hoc basis? So we have, we do have a, um, we've actually got a promo just for everyone here on this webinar. So that's a good question because we do have a promo um, to help accelerate some pricing that I'll show a slide for here in a minute. Um, but we also, Absolutely case by case basis. I mean, I'll, to be honest with everyone up front, matching like for like with pricing um, isn't something we can always guarantee, but we are absolutely, you know, we're always looking to be flexible and incentivize, you know, new business displacements, et cetera. So handled ad hoc, like you said, Anth, um, we can have a chat and, and see what we can do. Okay, perfect. Uh, and that wraps up the questions uh, for the time being. All right, um, I've just got a couple of last closing slides then for everyone. Um, just to go ahead and say, you know, thank you everyone for attending today. The final steps, the last things we have, um, we are running two fast track virtual fast track to flex workshops um, for everyone who's attended this webinar today. Um, a fast track to flex workshop is a three hour long virtual workshop. It's usually hosted by myself and I've got my team and a sales engineer with me so we can get a bit more technical, um, but this is three hours to learn more deep dive into the MSP program, into those products. Um, and the other thing that we do is we actually do all of the, we do that MSP exam together. Um, so everyone walks out of the fast track with that certification done, ready to go. So the only prerequisite is you will need to sign up because you'll need to be able to access your partner portal so you can get into that exam. Um, so I've got the link here. I think we can probably put the link in the chat because it's it's a bit complex there. Um, yeah, but you'll all uh, you'll all be contacted and you'll have what you need to register there. Yeah, my colleague uh, Sophie's put the link in the chat for everybody to see there as well. Right. Um, we've got two dates for it that are available um, exclusively uh, for the Geocom partners to have that priority in. Um, these two dates are Thursday, August 11th. So we've got one running a week from today. We've got another one Tuesday, uh, September 27th. Just what we cover on it, a little bit of a preview of the agenda. First thing we do is we go over the products, and this is very much, um, you know, in, in friendlier times, you know, ideally we'd be able to, we get a nice big venue and have all of you in a big, big classroom. Um, so it's definitely a, a classroom environment. You know, there's not too slide heavy. We look at the products. We have the, we have an engineer with us as well. We look at policies, we answer questions, but we look at every product, take a break. We look at the dashboard, go around it live, talk again, just a refresher on the program licensing and the things you need to know for the exam. And then the last chunk, we just, we devote towards completing that exam. And we get everyone out by about three o'clock um, with that MSP Flex exam done. So we've got that one landing page where you can register for both. Um, and then we also have the um, these landing pages for you guys specifically, which we have one for the 11th and one for the 27th to sign up for those. And we'd also like to offer um, something that we're doing with this, you know, this this activity. Um, 
is our MSP fast start promo. So this is only currently being offered out um, to the attendees of these Geocom webinars. We do not have this webinar. Uh, we do not have this promo published and sent out across all of our MSP partners of the channel. Something special for everyone who's attended today and then decides to also go through with that training um, with that certification. Um, we will once you have your Connect Flex certification done now, if you complete this certification between now and September 22nd, uh, what we'll do is we'll increase your price band for three months, and that will put you on the third price band of user licenses, 500 to 999, uh, which will give you that price for everything in the user category, endpoint email, mobile, fish threat device encryption, um, as well as the second price band for all of the other groups. So that is server, device, cloud assets, and that's for six months from the time you complete your certification um, and you have until September 30th to ask us to put that in place for you. So once you complete that, if you're going through Geocom, we'll know to go ahead and provide you with that fast start promo. So that website again is sophos.com slash MSP. It's all you have to do to get there. Um, and click on that link to become an MSP partner. Some contact details for you here. If you have any queries on the SOFO side of things, we have my details there directly, and it's just my uh, first name, dot last name, kyle.torres at sophos.com. If you'd like to get in touch with our team, it's MSP Sales UKI at sophos.com. So we have our MSP Sales inbox, shared mailbox there. Um, and any questions you have on the Geocom side, you can send that over to sales at geocom.com and they'll get you in touch with the right rep to help you with those. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for spending a good hour, hour and 10 minutes with us this morning. Um, the next step I would say is you've got, if you're, if you're interested, there's two things you can do. Get in touch with us or your account manager at Geocom to book an onboarding appointment straight away. Um, or if you'd like to get something in the diary, have a look at those fast track events and get signed up, signed up to those fast track events. Um, but that's all I've got. Um, thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you very much, everybody, for joining. And thank you for the questions as well. It's always good uh, to get a bit of uh, interactiveness on, on these webinars. Um, as Kyle mentioned, um, if you do uh, have any questions that come up after this webinar, um, I'm the same, you know, half an hour later, I'll be thinking I should have asked that question. Please do uh, reach out to your Geocom representative or email sales at geocom.com. Uh, we'll make sure that somebody uh, gets in touch with you. Uh, those that ask questions that we couldn't answer today, we will come back to you uh, at some point as well. That's great. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day and hopefully we'll speak to some of you guys soon. Thank you very much.